Thank you for having me. Thank you very much for being here once again. Uh, may God richly bless you. Uh, please introduce yourself to our wonderful viewers and we will take it from there. Okay, thank you. My name is Theophilus Lamte. And um, first of all, I want to say thank you to Pastor Marcus Antimenu and Mama Comfort and also the supporting stuff that we have that make it a uh, um, I mean, like success anytime we come to the studio, mm -hmm. not to talk of Pastor Seth, Pastor mm -hmm. Dan, and the rest of the team that are behind the scenes that makes it possible for us to gather. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. And um, I pray that God will continue to bless everything concerning you. And thank you for honoring our invitation um, all the time. And thank you for speaking for speaking and for impacting our generation. Uh, may God Richard bless you and bless your family. So thank you once again for being here. So before we go further, please uh, share a word of prayer with us uh, before we start our discussion. Shall we pray? Yes, please. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to bless your name. We thank you for such a time like this that your people are gathered to hear your word. Not everybody that went to sleep woke up this morning. Yes. Not everybody that woke up this morning is even alive and well as we speak now. Because of that, we don't take it for granted at all. We pray that this program, you send your Holy Spirit to brood over it. Jesus. Use us in spite of ourselves. Anoint these lips of clay. Let it be a blessing unto your people. Mm -hmm. May we not speak to the emotions of the people. May your word go into the spirit of everyone that is listening. Jesus. At the end of it all, we know that all the glory, honor, and adoration will be given to your name. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen, amen, amen. May God richly bless you, uh, minister. Um, thank you for being here once again. Mm -hmm. So family, today our topic is understanding uh, the times and seasons of life. Without understanding, we will make so much decisions without understanding. Um, instead of moving forward, we'll keep on going in circles and we'll be, we will be wasting so much time. So here today we are going to... Um, discuss something about understanding the journey that we have been called to knowing when to turn knowing when to stop knowing where when to proceed is all about understanding so um man of god thank you very much once again mm -hmm. so let's go right into our discussion for today um what should be our understanding or what should be um our knowledge what sh what should be Yes, basically understanding when it comes to seasons and times of life. So because there are many things that happens. Mm -hmm. And as we're saying, without understanding, you will make you know, unhealthy choices. Mm -hmm. you know. So what should be our understanding, please? Thank you for the question. What should be our understanding of yes. understanding of times? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is quite interesting. But if we look at it right from creation, mm -hmm. um, Everything has times and seasons. Okay. Nothing just happens. So you realize that um, there is morning and then there is night. And yeah. As long as morning has its time to do whatever it's supposed to do, night must stay away. Mm -hmm. But when it is time for night, mm -hmm. morning cannot stop it. Okay. So that is the um, very basic explanation or meaning of times and seasons. Mm -hmm. When one time is up, the other one automatically must fizzle out. Yeah. And then when it's time for that one to also show, the other one has no option. It cannot reject moving away. Mm -hmm. So then the Bible will make classic statements like there's a time to sow, a mm -hmm. time to read, time to be born, and a time. So there is time for everything. And understanding the times and seasons that you find yourself in, or understanding the times and seasons that things are supposed to happen is very critical to the believer of our days. There is not a time where this thing has been so important than the time that we are in now. Okay. So you need to understand why there are wars in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. You need to understand why Russia is attacking Ukraine. Somebody might think it's just history or philosophy or whatever it is, but those people who are deep spiritually, mm -hmm. nothing is coincidence for them. Everything has a meaning in the realms of the spirit. So as far as you might not have any explanation or reason for it. It doesn't mean that is what it is. Mm -hmm. Because if somebody is spiritually deep and connected to God, the person understands why things happen 
the way they happen. So I normally say that my life is not coincident. Okay. So whatever happens to me is for a reason. Mm -hmm. And it is understanding times and seasons that will give you that um, reference point that you'll be able to say that this thing is for a reason. If mm -hmm. you know that is for a reason, then you must find ways and means to understand why it happened. Okay. Else things will take you by chance. Mm. So you are trying to tell us that without the reason, it will be hard to, you know, achieve our goals that we um, are trying to set or what God has called us to do on this earth, basically. All right. So let's say as a youth, you're mm -hmm. coming up, we have your mind is so occupied with so much and it's like you're just tapping. OK, let me try this. Let me try that. Let me. You are trying so much mm -hmm. in that case. How can we stop? right mm. paused and, and check the reason behind um so many things that happen because the youth now we, we are really it's like we are trying to enjoy at the same time trying to do what is right at the same time trying to explore mm. you know so what should be our reason for doing everything that we we do basically okay so the reason mm -hmm. why things happen yeah makes it very important for you to achieve the purpose okay so most of us like you're saying the youth we just do things haphazardly we just mm -hmm. just want to do it because everybody is doing it i want yeah. to do it because i feel times and seasons are not are not as a result of feelings okay it is supposed to be orchestrated by god and one thing that a youth is also missing out is that if we are living our lives we need to um pattern it along the the likes of God himself okay. and then Jesus. And if you look at um, creation, you realize that when God created something, Bible said, he will look at it and said, it mm, is good. It is good. Okay. But our youth of today, what we miss doing is that mm -hmm. we don't take our time to analyze the things that we are doing. Yeah. So we want to do a whole lot of things at the same time. God did not even do everything at the same time. That's mm -hmm. why he could have just snapped his finger like that and the world would just come to existence. Mm -hmm. But he wanted to teach us something mm -hmm. that we should do things in an orderly manner. Mm -hmm. So day one, he would do something. Day two, he would do something. Yeah. And the way he did it was such that what he would do today, what will come tomorrow will rely on that one. Mm -hmm. So Building God, a pond. Exactly. Okay. So God did not go ahead to create the fishes before the sea. Mm -hmm. So if we were created in the image and likeness of God, these are some of the things that we should do. Yeah. Even God did not start creation until the Holy Spirit started to hover on the surface of the waters. Mm. That means that there is an inspiration, there is an energy you need from within mm. to be able to go about creation. Okay. So the fact that God wanted to create, he didn't just come and say, appear, appear, and things appear. No, <laughs> okay. the Bible said he allowed the the, the Spirit of God started to hover on the surface of, and God said and God saw. Mm -hmm. So for God to say and see, mm -hmm. he needed the Holy Spirit to be around. And the Holy Spirit is actually the action man of the Trinity. Mm -hmm. So in the same likeness as young men and young women that we are um, going about our daily activities, if you are not careful, you are going to follow the, the instructions of what the world is saying. Mm -hmm. But if you are a believer, you need the Holy Spirit to be available for you to take your decisions. Without the Holy Spirit, you're going to take decisions. And that is how come you take a decision, something happens, and then you come back and say, oh, I'm cool here. But if you stay with Christ, if you stay with the Holy Ghost, you will see that you do things at specific times because it is according to the calendar of heaven. And as we go on with our discussion, you, there will be times where probably we'll just cite examples and you see how people were very timely in their dealings and the results that came out of it. So I think if the youth have to take something out, they need to stay with the Holy Ghost. They need to um, be in synchrony with the Holy Ghost because it is only the Spirit of God that can know what is in the mind of God. Okay. So whatever you are doing here on earth is not because you are just here to do something. Mm -hmm. You are fulfilling a part of God's agenda. Okay. So for you to know what is in God's mind, you must go through the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. because that is how you can know what is in, 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 the, in the mind of God. Mm -hmm. So without a relationship with the Holy Spirit, I can tell you without even closing my eyes that you are bound to fail. Okay. Because you can never know what God has said concerning you until you are able to align yourself properly mm -hmm. with the one that has the God, mind of God in his bosom, and that is the Holy Spirit. Mm. Wow. So then in this case, aligning with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. um, can you help us in ways or some means that we can properly align um, even though we are always busy and we, Father, thank you for today. Mm. I commend myself. Mm. Guide me. Amen. Father, I'm back. <laughs> thank you. In what ways can we properly align ourselves with the Holy Spirit? Because I know that 
okay, maybe you have more within you, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you have the healing power, but that short moment wouldn't lead you to that deeper dimension. Right. In what ways can we properly align ourselves and build that relationship with the Holy Spirit? Right. Um, to be able to harness the full power of God, it takes a life of solitude. It takes um, what people would say the wilderness experience. Okay. So if you look at the likes of Elijah, you mm. look at the likes of David, these were men that secluded themselves from everybody mm -hmm. you see we are in a generation where we are all looking for acceptance mm -hmm. we are all eager for the likes and the views that we just want to do something for show business but this thing we are doing is not show business mm -hmm. this is ministry yeah. some people even call what we are doing as work it's mm -hmm. not it's not work per se it's not a business it's ministry when you see it as ministry it's different from the other things that you would do if it wasn't. Yeah. So ministry is supposed to be such that there is a pattern for it. Okay. You cannot become a specialist medical doctor mm -hmm. if you decide to be skipping classes. So the route to even get to be a medical doctor is very, very difficult, let alone being a specialist because lives are in your hands. One mistake, a life is gone. So as it happens in the physical, you can imagine what happens in the spirit world. So if God is supposed to use you to that degree, I mean, you cannot take chances. So if you keep speak, I mean, skipping classes, you will not graduate. Mm. But for you to graduate means you've spent so much time with that particular thing that you have become an aspect of it. Okay. So you have the, the likes of this dangerous healing um, um, apostles and the rest yeah. that have walked yeah. the, the path already. You have the likes of this dangerous evangelist. They mm -hmm. spend time. I, I, I heard it. I don't know how far that's true, but I was told that um, this great evangelist, um, why am I skipping this name? The name will come. Yeah. All he was preaching was John 3.16. Wow. Billy Graham. Billy Graham. Thank mm. you. Billy Graham. Mm. But Billy Graham was, he, he would say it so calmly. Mm. He doesn't have to jump all over the place. He doesn't have to do any acrobatics. He would just say John 3.16. Yeah. And he preached it for years. Wow. But if you see the amount of people that give their life to Christ, mm. and you are sometimes asking, is it not the same John 3, 16 that is in my Bible? <laughs> but why is it that nothing? He yeah. has been able to pick the spirit in there. Mm. So when he says John 3, 16, it's different from what I would say That's is John 3, 16. Yeah. So the same way the eye specialist mm. or the lung specialist mm. is able to go to school for so long, pay attention, take exam upon exam, you cannot be effective for Christ. Mm. If all you do is you want to be on sabbatical leave, Okay. You just come today and tomorrow your emotions are all over the place. Your boyfriend didn't text you, so you don't want to pray again. And your husband yeah. didn't, you know, provide. Mm -hmm. No, serving God is devoid of emotions. Mm -hmm. So he said we should do it in spirit mm -hmm. and in truth. Mm -hmm. So if you can really have the power that the ancient man had, mm -hmm. you need to be somebody who spends time with God. Mm -hmm. Else you just be shallow and you are going to mess up a lot of lives because lives are... Um, in, in, in like I mean lives are on the line just yes. like the way I was talking about the medical doctor if you make a mistake somebody will die mm. medical doctors people die physically yeah. but when you come into the spirit you don't know the damage at yeah, which yeah, you, are, you are going to cause because generations are involved mm. spiritual things have generations mm. involved yes mm. so that is why we need to spend time to do the things that we do to be able to uh, come up with the full power that um, comes with it Wow Thank you very much. So family, thank you uh, once again for being with us and for joining us. I pray and I hope that you will be blessed with our wonderful uh, discussion that we are having. So we are talking about understanding the times and seasons of life. Thank you for being here um, once again. So regarding the time that we need to um, spend with the Lord, um, does it depend on the person or we all have the same time that we can spend and he will appear to us or he will reveal himself to us or we will have that encounter with him. Um, maybe somebody is spending an hour, somebody spends 24 hours and they will, you know, dependent. Yeah. So my question is, um, is it the same thing when it comes to spending? Are we on the same level um, when it comes to the time that he will reveal himself unto us? Yes. Okay. Um, thank you as, uh, for this question as well. It's, 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 it's quite funny, but you see, the aim of God from creation, like I said some time ago, is just been about building an 
intimate relationship with us. Okay. So it's the degree of your intimacy mm. that makes them appear like you're asking. Okay. Maybe whether five minutes or two minutes or 10 or 20 or probably never ap appears. Okay. So based on the intensity of your intimacy you have with him, mm. he's able to just appear like, like that. Okay. So the way probably I've been able to build a relationship with mm. Christ is so much that when I, I cough, mm. they will respond. Okay. So somebody will say that if you are praying and you keep claiming that God is not hearing, that means mm. you, you don't frequent heaven that much. Okay. So the angels are not used to your voice. Mm. But if you keep on talking to him all the time, the moment you open your mouth, they know. Yeah. So if you are very connected to him, you don't need an hour, you don't need two hours, you don't need probably like um, days to be able to connect because you are supposed to be with him all the time. Mm. So the moment you just get into that mode, he's there. Mm. You can be in the train, you just connect and you are gone. Mm. You don't have to go to the mountain and spend 40 days for God to appear. Mm. Mm. So you see, those were the kind of things that the Pharisees were doing. They made it seem as if if you do this, this is what it is. If you do that, but we are in a generation where we, yeah, it's, it's not like um, constant that you have to worship God in the synagogue or in the temples or on the hills or down there. God is everywhere. Yeah. So as long as you are able to connect, God is here. Mm. Once we've decided to do something for God, God is here. I say, where two or three are gathered, there he is and they are missed. Mm -hmm. So it's not about the, 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 the longevity. It's about how much of um, a, a, a life of donation that you've given. You've given all yourself into building a relationship with Christ. So the moment you, you do this, Christ comes. Mm. So people have gotten into the mechanical way where they feel, if I pray for five hours, then I'm fine. You can sweat, your whole clothes can get wet, but nothing has happened. Wow. And like I was telling you about Billy Graham, Billy Graham can probably will be there for two minutes mm. and the atmosphere he will command mm. is amazing. Yeah. Someone like Catherine Coleman, yeah. I was told that probably the whole 24 hours is just like as if he's talking to wow. a personality. Wow. Shaking her head and going up and down. Mm. So when she appears mm. in an auditorium, mm. it's like the whole place yes. is on fire. Wow. The, the time that is spent mm. is a reflection of what you see. So mm. when you see men of God that are doing amazing, it is not that time that they started praying that the things that are happening. Mm. They are just producing what they've been doing. Wow. So it is more of a life in the closet mm. that God then decides to demonstrate. Most of them, they will say, I, I see, I hear. Mm -hmm. They've heard, they've seen in their closet. Okay. Some of them, they've had the visions already. They mm. come and just come and tell you what is happening. Mm. So you might just conf like get confused and think that, oh, because we prayed for an hour and he started ministering. So if I pray for an hour, I'll minister. Mm -hmm. I can tell you familiar spirits will just give you <laughs> nice ideas. Yes. That's not the way it works. Okay. So let's, let's understand that a life of loneliness mm. is part of Christianity. Okay. And Jesus even did that. After he was announced as the son of God, mm. I thought he was going to start a, a church and say, the dove ministry <laughs> or the Holy Spirit <laughs> fell on me or Jordan River. Yeah. But right from there, after all the accolades, mm. this is not somebody like, you can, they heard the heavens talking. Mm -hmm. This is the greatest they've seen, yes. John the Baptist. Yes. He's saying that somebody is greater than him. Mm. Me, yeah. I won't even need any brass band. <laughs> the following day, I will just mount pulpit and then yeah. Theophilus Lamte yeah. ministries <laughs> something something and then that, Wonderful. that's it. <laughs> but he taught us a very important secret. Yeah. The moment that thing happened mm. he went into the wilderness. He was led into the wilderness mm. to be tempted to be of the tempted. devil. So wow. that was the loan. You can imagine mm. 40 days, 40 nights he mm. was alone. Yes. So he was teaching us that there are times that you need to be separated from everybody. Okay. If the Holy Spirit fell on him he should have done it. But after the first Bible said he was now full of the Holy Spirit. Mm. So it makes me understand that the Holy Spirit is even in dimensions. Okay. So the fact that you've seen the blind eyes open, that is not the end of it. Okay. The fact that you've been able to lay hands on somebody and the person will just manifest, that's mm. not the end of it. Mm. There is more to God than you can think. Okay. So Jesus has a point when Mary Magdalene, mm. no, I mean Mary and Martha, mm -hmm. came to tell him that their brother Lazarus was mm. sick. Some people were arguing, why didn't he go? He's, he's been eating their food all the time and he didn't mind them. Mm. He wanted to teach them another side of ministry. Okay. All they were used was, I mean, healing. So mm -hmm. he would lay hands mm -hmm. and people, mm -hmm. he wanted to show them that if the person dies, I can bring the person back. Yeah. So yeah. until Lazarus died for him to go and call Lazarus to come back, mm -hmm. the disciples had never been exposed to that side of ministry. Okay. 
So there are, there, I mean, there are dimensions, dimensions to God, and it all depends on how mm. a life of secluded, I mean, a secluded life he, he can live. Yeah. So you check all the great men. Billy Graham, I'm told, mm. was living in some far place in America. It's mm. like he's not in the New York or yeah. Yeah. just some forest be somewhere mm -hmm. that is always praying. The moment he moves, is is, is going for mm. ministry. Mm. And then we saw how amazing his life was. So that is the essence of we having to spend time in yeah. God, with like um, in a, a closet, yeah. it generates that power that we are able to demonstrate when we go out there. So the time there mm. is very, very critical. Yeah, very, very. Mm. All right. So in this case, can we limit the dimensions, like the levels that He can take us? Mm. Can we ourselves be um, self destruction? Like, can we self sabotage where He's trying to do, or the levels that He's trying to take us? Mm. Can we? interfere with what he's trying to do in our lives yes we can we can and we always do because okay. you see the moment you become emotional about things of the spirit you short circuit the power of god okay. so it's it gets to the point where it's about you and it's not it's not about what god wants to do okay so god why me mm -hmm. why is it that i'm not married why is it i don't have a child mm -hmm. and zachariah was complaining mm. but Zachariah did not know that him looking for a son was beyond him having a son at mm. a particular time. Okay. The son you are supposed to have is supposed to be the forerunner of Jesus. Mm. So unfortunately, you cannot have a child like anybody else has a child. Wow. So Zachariah was comparing himself to the mm. people that were um, around during his yeah. dispensation and yeah. he felt bad. Mm -hmm. Why I knew Zachariah felt bad was that when the angel Gabriel eventually came to deliver the message, he mm -hmm. said, how can I be sure? <laughs> in yeah. his mind it's like I wanted to have a child when I was like 24 to show my friends that you know I'm also guy uh -huh. you know you know you don't respond there, nah, <laughs> now that nah. I'm well stricken in age it's what am I going to do with a yeah. child but yeah. Bible said that the son you're about to have will mm. bring you joy that okay. was one mm. two is going to bring much more joy to a lot more people okay. so your son is not just about you mm. it's about God's agenda because that guy is supposed to trumpet the coming of the Messiah. Okay. So until God has finished his scan to find a womb mm. that was ready to accommodate the Messiah, you unfortunately you cannot have a child. Wow. But you see, emotions can let you short circuit what God wants to do. Mm. You can get offended, but mm. your offense does not change God. Okay. He will do whatever you're supposed to do. But the danger is that you can be punished for it. Mm. Because the career had been praying for a child. Okay. Emotions got in. The child didn't come when he wanted to get a child. Mm. When God was ready, because Mary has also gotten to the age where now Jesus can come six months after that manifestation. Mm -hmm. And you challenge Angel Gabriel, you mm. become mute. Wow. So when you ask things that mm. are not coming during the time you are looking for it, be careful when the result is coming. Okay. When emotions set in, you pay a price. Wow. The difference between... Zachariah and Mary was that Mary never prayed that he, she wanted to carry the Messiah. Uh -huh. So when she was even in awe, oh, really like, how mm -hmm. am I supposed to get pregnant if I don't know? The Bible said the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. Mm -hmm. And at that point, she never got punished. People are like, she also did, she also doubted. Mm -hmm. She didn't doubt. She was only in awe. Mm -hmm. And she did not ask for that thing. Okay. But Zachariah had been praying, praying, praying. And when the time came, mm -hmm. he was saying, ah, I wanted it earlier. <laughs> So you see, no matter how <laughs> okay. spiritual you can be, if you are okay. not careful, carnality will have a hold of you. Mm. So Zachariah just stepped out of the spirit for a minute. Wow. He was the high priest. He stepped out for a minute. Mm. And then he had to be punished for it. Because if he had consulted heaven about his childbirth, mm. I'm sure heaven would have told him that according to my plan, yeah. your child must be the pro forma. So we are waiting for another womb mm. that will carry Jesus. So wow. hold on. And that would have settled all the anxiety in the spirit. So Paul told us in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 that in all things pray. Hmm. He said don't be anxious about anything. So when you are not praying and you are not getting the answer, it brings anxiety. Wow. Without praying, mm -hmm. it brings anxiety. Yes. Wow. Thank you very much. Thank you family. Thank you very much for uh, joining. I hope you are all learning. And uh, within us we are being transformed to his glory and to his honor. But let me go back to what we just discussed. How do we tame our emotions? You know, mm -hmm. emotions can go overboard. Emotions, um, emotions are part of us. Mm -hmm. 
how do we control our emotions how do we tame our emotions like how our emotions can interfere and at the end we might receive punishment in certain situations or in certain conditions how do we um, control our emotion or tame our emotions to be able to align with what God is doing at that moment Taming emotions is a very, very difficult thing, I must say. But the moment you accept or you come to that realization that your life is not just about you. Okay. It's about God. Mm. And whatever happens with your life is mm. God. It reduces the stress, the anxiety. Okay. And all the mm. hula baloo that can come out of it. And that is where your emotions are tamed. Okay. It's two ways. Either... You move to become very emotional and your spiritual senses die off or you become very spiritual and then your emotions die off. So it is one of the two. You cannot have two function at the same time. Mm. That was why when Zachariah moved out of the spirit, he became yeah. emotional and the yeah. emotions made him even wanted to reject mm. the manifestation of the praise that he had been praying. Mm. So the more we stay with God, the more our emotions will die. So mm. Paul said, mortify your members here on earth. Okay. So he mentioned anger, bitterness, mm. malice. Mm. There are some things that God will not do for you. Okay. There are some things that will not work even if the whole of River Jordan is poured <laughs> in on your house. <laughs> you must do it. So then there is a gift of the Spirit we call self-discipline okay. or self-control. It's not God-discipline. It's not God-control. It's self-discipline. Mm. So things like malice, anger, mm. bitterness, you have to control them. You have to control. So somebody will say, Oh, me dear, I didn't hear me because you are alive. Mm. When you die to self, mm. nothing happens. Like somebody will tap you and you can't even feel it mm. because you are dead to yourself. Okay. So the more sensitive you are emotionally makes me understand that you are too alive. You are too alive. Okay. Because a lot of things were being said against Jesus. He heard everything. He didn't respond to everything. Mm -hmm. Jesus was one of the people that, or probably I can say the only person that understood time to the latter. Okay. He will tell them, it's not time yet, woman. What am I supposed to do with you? Mm. He will say, my time has come. Mm. You, you, you see Jesus talking about time. He understood. So when, when you understand time, you don't give attention to everything. And that is somebody who is not emotional. Okay. When it was time for him to die, mm. he didn't say, hey, um, let, me, let me say something that I'll, I'll, I'll be released. <laughs> he knew that right from that, that place, he mm. was going to face the cross. Okay. So although the... The, the, the priest was trying to force him to say something to be free. He mm. knew at that time that this is the appointed time. Mm. So he said, no, I, my life is in my hands. I can throw it and pick it back. Mm. But for the sake of my assignment, yeah. I'll keep quiet. Wow. So tell me your emotions is what makes you say what you have to say when you have to say. It. Okay. And then not saying it when you don't have to say. It. Mm. Emotions will let you, let you talk anyhow. Mm. No, there's a time to talk and there's a time to be silent. Mm. those are people that have mastered their emotions mm. nothing moves them you can poke them they will not respond mm. they only respond to the dictates of the times and the seasons okay. so like i said you must walk with the spirit of god and jesus was full of the spirit of god at the time mm. so everything he did was exactly what heaven wanted mm. without that you become emotional mm. and when the physical starts getting to you you begin to choose other options and that is not what god wants us to do wow so family, when the physical becomes active, um, we walk in the flesh and that will not help us. So may God continue to help us to build ourselves and to fortify ourselves in the spirit. All right, man of God. So in this case, um, when it comes to um, walking in the spirit and, mm. and being um, fortified so well mm. within the spirit, when do we um, allow ourselves to be emotional and when do we allow ourselves that, hey, you got to control yourself? When do we tell wh when to apply, you know, what, like when, when should we apply, okay, let me be emotional with this person, mm. you know, having sympathy, um, coming to the extent of maybe the situation the person is going through mm. and when to, okay, all right, this part, okay, Let's pray about this. Let's do this. Let's do that. In that spiritual realm. Mm. When should we apply both? Okay, I'll give you a story from mm -hmm. the Bible and then probably that will answer your question. Okay. If we look at the story of Joseph, I've, I, I think I've, I've said it here before. Mm. 
from the time Joseph was being sold by the brothers, yeah. all the way to the time he became the prime minister. Yeah. If I was around at the time, mm. and I had an opportunity to do something for Joseph before yeah. he became prime minister, mm. I'd have probably gone to hide the Vin Diesel, mm. the Jason Statham, the <laughs> Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Why? To break him out of prison. Yes. Because the dad was in pain and the mm -hmm. young man is still alive. Yeah. Yeah. But you see, if I understand times and seasons, mm. I would know that him being there is part of God's agenda. What God is trying to do. Okay. So instead of God putting him amongst his own kindred that wanted him dead, mm. God would rather put him in a prison to secure him. So Joseph being in prison actually was for his own protection. Okay. Because his own people wanted him dead. Mm. So if he had been left with his family, they would have killed him. Mm. So anybody who wanted to do something out of emotions yeah. would have said, oh, let's, let's go and plead with the king. Let, let Pharaoh and their people release Joseph to go back to his father. His father is, is, is under stress and all that. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. according to the calendar of God, according to times and seasons, the young man had to be there wow. to be protected. Mm. Because there is going to be a time when the gift upon him is going to be needed. Mm. Mm. That was why when the butler and the baker had a dream, and one of them was supposed to be exonerated and another killed, he even did not remember to mention Joseph. So people mm. were like, oh, Nepadi, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> no. Everything that happens, uh -huh. God is involved. So because God knew what he wanted to do with Joseph, mm. he made sure that the guy would not remember Joseph. Wow. If he had remembered Joseph wow. and told the king how mm. Joseph had been helpful to him mm. by interpreting mm. his dream, probably mm. Joseph would have been pardoned. Yeah. The moment he's pardoned, he would run out of the, the country and sure. go back to his father's place. Sure. But God needed him to be there until Pharaoh would dream. Wow. So you see, what I'm trying to say in essence is that emotions will, for a sure, take you out of the plan of God. Mm. Emotions will make you want to bring somebody out of a situation that God deliberately put him there. Mm. It's not everything that is a, it's a, a punishment. Okay. Emotions will make you feel like, why should David be in the wilderness when mm. all his brothers are at home? Mm. But mm. it was God that put him there because he was on training. Mm. God wanted to train him and test him and build him up so that when it's time for him to be given the whole of Israel, he had what it takes. Mm. So the difference between David and Saul is that Saul did not have that privilege to go through that school. Yeah. So when it was time for David to now be king of Israel, he had been tested and proven that yeah. this is a guy who can do the job. So that is the danger of emotions. Mm. Emotions will take you out of God's plan. It might look like you are suffering, but it's part of the journey. Wow. So spirituality is what will make you understand the times and the seasons. Mm. It's not every day that you're supposed to laugh. Like mm. I said earlier, mm. there's a time to laugh, there's a mm. time to smile, there's a time to love, there's a time mm. to hate, mm. plant and reap. Mm. You cannot keep planting all the time. You must give it time to germinate and then you harvest. Okay. You see, so Everything has a reason. Without understanding the reason, mm. without understanding why it's happening at that time and season, mm. you will make a mistake. It might look very appealing to you. It might look like that is the right thing to do. So the other day I was reading and Charles Spurgeon was talking about discernment. And this is how he defines discernment. And it was, it was so interesting for me. He said discernment actually is not about deciding um, right, choosing right from wrong. But it is actually choosing right from almost right. Mm. And I was like, wait a minute. It's very easy to choose right from wrong. Yeah. You know that like probably I'm a Christian so smoking is not good. It's, it's very easy. But choosing right from almost right, mm. that is where we need the spirit of discernment. Wow. And that is how sometimes you're supposed to live this thing. So it might look as if is it is bad mm -hmm. or the guy is suffering mm -hmm. but it is through the suffering that god is about to make him mm. if you don't mold the clay you will not get that fine piece you are looking for wow my pastor in belgium will tell you that the only when you see people pressing hard against you mm. is because they must see the content you don't you don't see the content of your toothpaste unless you press it yes so when people press you it's an opportunity for you to show what you carry mm. <laughs> but somebody will say Life is, is too hard and mm. you are suffering, so mm. you know, back out. No. Okay. Christians don't back out. Whenever there is an opportunity for you to be pressed, mm. I know it sounds a little frightening. Yeah, when you are being pressed, pressed like, wow. that is the time that you mm. show the content you have. Because the days of the apostles in mm. Acts, 
talks about the fact that the more they were persecuted, the more the gospel spread. Wow. They had become comfortable where they were, but they had, the reason for Jesus bringing them together was that the gospel would be, would be, mm. would be, would be, would be I mean, preached all over the place. Yeah. But they've gotten to a point where they were receiving seeds and they were being mm. cooked for and all of that, so they had relaxed. relaxed but that yeah. was not the reason why mm. they, they were there. So God had to make sure that the people would frustrate them. Mm. So in their frustration, people running helter-skelter, the mm. gospel spread. And wow. that was how come Philip took the whole of Samaria. Because without that, they would have been comfortable there. Mm. But then when they were pressed and everybody scattered, the yeah. gospel spread. The gospel so spread. when things happen to us believers, mm. when we get into diverse challenges and yeah. uncomfortable situations, yeah. there is always a God element in there. Okay. That is the time you are supposed to manifest the God you have. Mm. We are supposed to be witnesses of God. Mm. So wherever you stand, God must be seen. So Paul said that even in my imprisonment, it has encouraged people to know that I mean, don't be afraid. After, after all, what they'll, they'll take you to prison for preaching the good news. Yeah. So in it all, Jesus Christ must be preached. Mm. And Paul did whatever it took him to do that the gospel will reach the, the top. He knew what to say that will get him to be sent to the next level of authority. Mm. One reason. Mm. So when he gets there, he can preach the gospel to them too. Oh. That is the essence of um, life and the challenges that we go through and how it affects the mm. business of um, Christ, yeah. you must make sure that you take advantage of every situation wow. to preach the good news. Wow, wow. Family, thank you, thank you, thank you. We are being blessed at this moment. Thank you once again uh, for being part of our today's program. All right, man of God. So, uh, in a situation mm. whereby, um, in this in this, uh, I should say that God used circumstances mm. to shape us and to mold us. Mm. How do we know when to help mm. and when to allow the person be mm. so that God can do what he's trying to do? Mm. Okay, for example, I'm trying to lift this table. Mm -hmm. It's heavy, but maybe God knows that I have the strength within me. I have the um, capability to carry it myself. I just need to stand well, position myself well. In this case, I have a brother who's close by. And I can easily call to help me. When do we know when to assist? And when do we know when to just let them, you know, be and allow God to do his own thing? Okay, so let me move your example a little further. So okay. <laughs> I'll be able to give you an All explanation. Right. So let's talk about the days of David, okay? Uh -huh. So like an example like that, the days of David and then. Um, people had gathered to make David king, and mm. they were supposed to go to battle. Yeah. The different um, tribes were all av av available. So if you want to go to war, you just assemble your strong men, right? Yeah. That is the normal thing to the do. Normal thing, yeah. But then if you look at the days that I'm talking about, mm. there was a particular group called the Issachar tribe. Mm. Mm. They were the least amongst the people. Mm -hmm. Bible said mm -hmm. there were about 200 elders. Mm. But what happened was that these were the people that carried an anointing that made them be, to be able to perceive and understand the times and the seasons. Wow. So although the easiest thing to do was to assemble people from all over to go and fight, yeah. they did not just go and fight. Mm. So it is this Issachar tribe that will be able to tell them what, when, and how to go about their activities. Mm -hmm. So it is not enough to have somebody who can assist you. Okay. It must be the right time. Mm. So having the people around to help does not mean it is time for you to be helped. Okay. David could not have defeated Goliath until he had conquered the lion and the bear. Mm. Because God needed to wire trust in him. Okay. Because what you need to use to defeat Goliath is based on your testimony. Mm. And Saul had no testimony. Wow. So Saul had to run away. Wow. But then people would have felt... Oh, why do you leave this young boy? No, let, he's the youngest. Let him come and stay mm -hmm. at home. They would have truncated his destiny. Wow. So in as much as you can do it or you have the means and resources to do it, that is not enough. So your brother can be nearby, but probably he coming to help you is even dangerous for him. So you must have that discerning abilities. You must be able to get into that place where God speaks to you. So he thinks that, oh, let me help you carry it. But you have that, 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 that perception that, or that um, perceiving ability that he coming to help you is detrimental to his health. 
although everything looks like ah but what is mary saying and he said oh sister let me help you carry but you had already seen that him getting up even probably he might trip and then he'll break his leg mm. so you don't, don't worry i'll do it and he's wondering why why it's because of discernment okay so it's not because it is wrong for him coming to help you but it looks like it's okay but it's not okay mm. that's why like i said charles Spurgeon will say that it's not right from wrong it's mm. right from almost, almost right yeah it's that thin line and it must be the voice of, of God. So it's not everything that is as obvious as it is. Mm. People that carry the discerning power, they do things that are not obvious. Okay. That is their strength. Mm. So in as much as there were a lot of skilled people, um, people, mighty men of valor who were supposed to go to war, they needed to be at the command of Issachar tribe. Okay. So they would say, bring 500 bring 200 no you will not go in july you will go in december mm. so it means that even winning the battle is not all about the mm. physical strength okay times and seasons are manipulated by the spirit mm. so when a Saka tribe tells you to go in july that means the host of heaven is available for you wow. you might have the millions of soldiers mm. but heaven is not backing you wow. so there was a time when mm. uh, moses and his people they were um, I, th I, was, I think it was that joshua was in battle and then um, jo uh, Moses had to go to the mountain. Bible said, as long as Moses kept his hands up, yeah. Joshua was winning the battle. So mm. it necessarily did not mean that Joshua was a skillful soldier. Mm. There was a hand that was lifted wow. that was causing him to win. Mm, to you see, win. times and seasons. Wow. So Moses understood the dynamics. Mm. And mm. Joshua could have been emotional and like, bro, you don't do that. <laughs> you don't do that. We are going for a battle and you are telling me that <laughs> I should go we and you go up present. there with your cousin. <laughs> no, we have to be down there to fight. Yeah, yeah. You see, so that is how emotions mm. can come in. It mm. looks like what Moses is doing is not, yeah. it's not right. It's, yeah. it's being selfish. Yeah. And that is the problem with some of us youth. Mm. Some of us young men and women mm. of God. There is an understanding that these older men of God have that we don't have. Mm. I'm sure if I was in the days of J um, Joshua, mm. Mm. I would have been like, Moses, you are not being nice. You know? <laughs> You are running away from the battle. Yeah, you are claiming you, yeah. are, you are super spiritual. Who should go and die? Who should go and die for you to live? But the moment his hands got weak, yes. then the battle turned. Mm. So is it not the same sword? Mm. Are they not the same soldiers fighting? Yeah. Yeah. But the, the, what actually was making the, the battle work mm. in the favor of the Israelites was the hands of God. So when even he was getting weary, the mm. people had to make sure that they placed something yes. to keep his hand there. To keep it up. So sometimes your victory is not in your skill. Mm. It depends on whose hands are lifted. Wow. Wow. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Family, thank you for being here with us. Thank you for watching. And I... Uh, I'm being blessed and I hope you are also uh, being blessed um, in our wonderful discussion that we are having. All right, let's go to our final um, um, question so that we can end. So how does our priorities, you know, influence um, the things that God is trying to do in our lives or the moves that needs to happen, mm -hmm. you know? You know, maybe let me do this one first, I'll do this one later. How does priority, you know, influence our uh, times and seasons priorities as um believers is is very dicey because priorities come in two ways it, it can be as a result of your own personal sentiments or your emotions like we've already said okay and your priorities can be in line with god's word mm. unfortunately most of our priorities is self okay. our self-image how we want mm. people to see us mm. and then we submerge the things that God wants to do in our life. Okay. The moment your priorities go ahead of God's policies or mm -hmm. God's plans mm -hmm. for your, your life or his, his um, kingdom, yeah. things are going to go messy. Okay. And that is exactly... I want to give you a, a story to kind of um, explain that. I, I, I like stories. <laughs> so let's look at Second Samuel, mm. probably from the verse 11 all the mm. way down. Mm. You see that there was this story about David, okay? And David, according to those times, mm. kings are supposed to go to war, okay? Yeah. But yeah. David decides not to go to war. Okay. Okay. Priorities. He okay. wanted to just relax, relax and chill out. But because he placed his priorities ahead of God's priorities, mm. that was how come he saw Bathsheba. Wow. Because the Bible said, as it was the, the, mm. the custom that kings will go to war, 
he had assembled everybody. Joab, everybody should yeah. go. All the, ham, the army yeah. of Israel should go to battle. Yeah. But he just decided to stay. Mm. So because he decided to stay, he had gotten out of understanding the time and season. Why am I using this one? Because David was one man who understood times and seasons. Okay. If I take God out, I can probably... I mean, mm. sorry, if I take Jesus out of the way, I mm. can say David. Because mm. David had the opportunity to kill Saul. Yeah. Saul was after him. Mm. Although he had been anointed king, mm. he got opportunity to kill the man. But he did He said no. Mm. He showed the man that I could have killed you, but mm. I'll not touch you. Yeah. I'm waiting for my time. Yeah. I don't think I can wait like that. Mm. When I have been ordained as a mm. whatever, so, yeah. and then there is somebody who mm. is even trying to kill me and I get opportunity, probably I'll just give you some poison to drink. And <laughs> to you know, but he understood yeah. time. He said no. Uh -huh. Let me wait for God himself to let this thing happen yes. organically. Yeah. So this is somebody who understood time. Mm. The moment he missed time, the devil placed an opportunity for him. Wow. And he, he stood at the roof. Mm -hmm. And then he saw, I said, an abnormally beautiful woman. Oh, wait. Bathing. Mm. And then you're asking, where in the <laughs> world can a king live? Yes. That there will be bathrooms that don't yeah, have roofs <laughs> around his neighborhood for him to see. Yes. Mm. Like, I'm, I'm just thinking, yeah. imagine like the presidency. <laughs> Which area would you live as a president? Yes. That you are able to see somebody's uh -huh. bathroom, the roof. Mm. Because because of the timing was wrong. Mm. And because of that, he developed an interest yeah. in the lady, brought yeah. the lady, mm. slept with the lady. And then the spirit of murder came upon him. Wow. Why? Because he had gone contrary to yeah. timings and seasons. From there, he had let his priorities go just... ahead of him. Mm. And that was probably the point where David actually lost mm. everything. Mm. After that time, he wasn't able to do anything yeah. great again. Yeah. He won the most battles because he knew times and seasons. Wow. Last week, we were talking about the fact that when the Amalekites came to mm. raid Ziklag mm. and took away, mm. he didn't even just run again after yeah. them, although yeah. he had the, the yeah. mighty men to go. True. He said they should bring him his effort and he prayed and asked God, should I? And God said, mm. So when you miss your time, you give the devil a buffet mm. wow. to do whatever he wants to do with you. So wow. he takes somebody's mm. wife Eventually, he mm. was trying to use deception to kill them. The man was not dying. Mm. And then he had to forcibly... Can you imagine? He wrote the, 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 the gentleman's scheme of death, mm. handed it over to him to send to the commander. You're, you're holding your own yes. death sentence. And wow. he didn't have any idea. Oh, that wow. is how missing times and seasons mm. can be dangerous. Okay. Because he had committed an atrocity mm. needed to protect himself. He ended up so. killing an innocent man mm. to marry the wife. Mm. And from that time, mm. nothing good happened to him. God wow. said, there's, there's blood in your hands. I can't let you build the temple. Wow. But this is a man who had fought so many battles mm. and won. Mm. Because the battles were sanctioned according to times and seasons, mm. they were not counted as blood. Wow. The only one that was blood was because he missed his timing and mm. he took somebody's wife. Wow. He what did not even kill the person himself. Mm. He said he has used the, the sword of the Amorites. Because he allowed Joab to put Uriah in a situation where the Amorites would, would kill him. Mm -hmm. So he skimming that thing. Yeah. Heaven saw it that he had killed wow. um, Uriah and there was blood on his hand. So from that time, he couldn't do anything great for wow. God again. So when your priorities come ahead of God's agenda, mm -hmm. so many things can go so um, amiss. Mm -hmm. And it was unfortunate, but David was not able to wow. um, fulfill that um, idea or that vision about building the kingdom mm. the temple and then he had to go on to mm. his son is it not interesting that even the child that he had with Bathsheba yeah God said the child was going to die when Nathan came died. to him mm. eventually the child died wow wow that is how wow. dangerous it is sometimes if our priorities Priority. go ahead of us wow he wanted to just chill out he mm. ended up seeing somebody's wife mm. a king living in a, a place like wow I don't know whether it's Labadi or Nima <laughs> I come from Labadi, so it's not like I'm, I'm talking about where I come from. Yeah. Wow, wow. So family, understanding times and seasons, when we um, mix our priorities, we put ourselves um, in danger. We need to be cautious of every move that we, we partake when it comes to our work and this journey that we have been called to. Thank you very much for um, staying with us. Thank you for um, being part of our today's program. Uh, but before we go, we cannot go without any final submissions from our minister, please. Um, anything you want to tell us? 
as we are departing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if, if there's anything I want to say, mm. just quickly, I'll, I'll give one more illustration. You see, we, we've been focusing on understanding times and seasons, yeah. okay? And I can tell you that most people under time, understand times and seasons. Mm -hmm. But the difference is that using the understanding you have to mm -hmm. take your next step mm -hmm. is the problem. Yeah. yeah. So we have people like the sons of the prophet. Mm -hmm. When Elijah was ready to go and be with the Lord, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then what happened with um, him was that he was being followed by his next of, um, the one who is next in command. Yeah. That was Elisha. Yeah. Elisha knew and understood the times yes. that my master is about to go. Mm -hmm. The sons of the prophet also understood the times and seasons because when they saw him, they said, we know the old man is about to go. Yeah. So you see, it's not enough to understand. Mm. What do you do with the level of knowledge or understanding you have? Yeah, been given. And that was what separated Elisha mm. and the rest of the sons of the prophet. Wow. He used that knowledge and understanding he had that my master is about to go. Mm. He carries something I must take. Wow. He risked his life for it. And then he got it. When he returned, the sons of the prophet, when they saw him, they said, we can see that the spirit of Elijah is upon you. Mm. So when you understand the time and seasons, which most people do, take advantage of that knowledge and step up and do, utilize that understanding. Everybody understands that Ghana will have rainy season and dry mm -hmm. season, right? Mm -hmm. But most people don't take advantage of the season. Yeah. Somebody will, will take advantage of the season and then probably be able to do things that will be beneficial to him when it's not common to everybody. Yeah. So it's not enough for us to understand the times and seasons. Mm. Everybody understands that we are getting to the end of the world. Yeah. How many of us are using that understanding or that knowledge to be able to change our lives, mm. to live a life that will position us properly yeah. for the coming of Christ? Yeah. So understanding is, is, is basic. As long as you become a child of God and you, the Holy Spirit is with, is with you, discernment becomes a thing mm. that you develop. Mm. But as to whether you are able to use that understanding, Using it. that is so my encouragement is that we should go a step further mm. and utilize the understandings that we have and not just be happy that we understand the times and seasons. Mm. What are we doing with it? What are we doing with it? Wow, wow. So family, uh, thank you very much. So us having uh, the spirit, um, us having... Um, the journey that we are going through is not just that. Not, us understand it, we need to go further and, and do what he has called us to do. Thank you very much, family. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. I, I pray that us, um, we, we all will learn or we will take something um, from our discussion and our lives will continue to be transformed to his glory. But before we go, please let us share a word of prayer that with our journey that we are going through any moment um, in our lives we'll be able to um, apply wisdom um, not just understanding what we are going through but applying the wisdom from above that we'll be able to um, make the right um, decisions from the good ones that are already there so please pray with us and um, commit us into the hands of God okay we pray Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to thank you for this opportunity that you've spoken to us. We thank you for all that are gathered to listen to your word today. We pray that aside the fact that you are giving us the spirit to understand the times and seasons, take us a step further to be able to know what to do with the understanding that we have. That is what will separate us from the masses. We pray in the name of Jesus that our priorities will not go ahead of us Jesus. because the moment our emotions and priorities go ahead of us, mm -hmm. there is going to be a break in fulfilling the blueprints of heaven. And whenever a break happens like that, the devil will take advantage. We rebuke the hand of the evil one. We rebuke the devourer. We pray that, Lord Jesus, whatever the enemy has schemed or plotted against us and anybody mm -hmm. concerning us, mm -hmm. that we are going to miss our times and seasons. Mm -hmm. We declare that it shall come to naught. You will help us. You will abide with us. You will brood over us. And everything we do will be in accordance to your word and your spirit. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. May God richly uh, bless you, man of God. Thank you very much for being a blessing unto us.